All right, bye-bye. See ya. All right, and then on to the final presentation of the day, Mr. Chris McMurtry, how are you? Dude, doing well. Uh, man, that was awesome uh, from, from Vince. That was really, really informative and it's incredible just seeing what the gaming industry is doing. And I love how music and gaming is, is, I feel like we as music have been learning a lot from the gaming industry and that's, uh, that's, that's been really, really cool. Uh, yeah. When he showed the comparison at the beginning, uh, between you know, music and film and TV, that was eye opening. I didn't realize that. Dude, right? Yeah, it's crazy. <laughs> kind of says it's, it all. Uh, it, it does, and it, it's. Uh, um, we won't get it into it today, but I'd love to to you know maybe next year's summit, uh, like talk about video game metadata, right? You know, and and the importance there. It's come up over and over and. Uh, there's a, a VR company uh, that we work with that, um, you know, they're really thinking about it the right way and creating a metadata standard around VR. Mm. And I was like, dude, like, this wow. is so great because uh, part of the reason, like, uh, Ray exists is because we didn't think through these things with music, you know, first. Uh, so um, it's, it's, it's pretty cool. Yeah. Um, if you hear snoring, uh, it's definitely not me. It's my dog and who's blocked <laughs> by this. So anyway, sorry about that. So no let me see if mine was behind me, but they're, they're not They're They're somewhere else. So. Yeah. And Chris from MLC, I heard his cat a few times earlier. So it's just whatever we've been doing this virtual stuff for a year. We've seen everything, I think. So, uh, Chris, let me introduce you for everyone here. Chris McBurtry is the head of uh, music product at Exactuals. Um, I expect that most people here are probably familiar with Exactuals, but, um, I was catching up with the Exactuals folks a couple months ago and learned about Ray, which is specifically what Chris is going to be talking about today. So, um, Chris, I know even beyond what you're talking about today, you're uh, uh, a huge, I think, just asset of music business knowledge. So thank you for joining us. And why don't you just introduce yourself and uh, Exactuals for everyone here who uh, might not know you? Yeah, for sure. Dude, uh, thank you. I, I mean, I, I'm really uh, incredibly honored to be here. Uh, I'm definitely the one that doesn't belong. <laughs> now nah, get out of here. Uh, um, uh, but, uh, but man, what a lineup, you know. Uh, and um, uh, real quick, before I jump in, I'd be remiss to, to not call out what a great uh, job Chris Aaron and, uh, and the whole MLC team has done. I mean, they've taken on what, uh, you know, has been you know, going into it seemed like an impossible challenge and just knocked it out of the park. Uh, and uh, so uh, was was just super excited there. Um, but um, uh, but yeah, I'm Chris McMurtry. I'm the head of music product at Exactuals. Uh, we have three music products. Uh, I believe uh, 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 we have uh, several friends and partners uh, that use our products on, on, on this uh, call. So thank you so much. Uh, but our, our, uh, our, our flagship product is Payment Hub. And, uh, you know, Payment Hub is uh, designed to uh, get rights holders paid. You know, that, that's, that's why we're having this conference, right? You know, and uh, we've processed over a billion dollars so far for rights holders, which is incredible. Uh, then we have SR1, which is uh, our royalty calculation engine. Uh, and then uh, what we'll be talking about today, uh, we have uh, Ray, which is royalties on artificial intelligence. And Ray's job is to know who to pay. Uh, SR1's job is to know how much to pay, and Payment Hub's job is to actually do the payments and provide a great experience to interact with those payments and gain insights uh, around them. Uh, so yeah, I mean, I'll turn it over to you. Um, you we can check your screen share and whatnot, and otherwise yeah. the stage is yours. Okay, sweet. Uh, let's try this here. Uh, yes, allow. Perfect. Seeing the infinite mirrors now. Yeah, right? we go into Inception then... first and then <laughs> to your deck. Sweet. <laughs> Looks uh, good. Everyone's... All right, perfect. Perfect. You're cruising. Cool, cool. Well, um, I'll go uh, uh, super fast so that we get to the fun stuff. Um, but uh, uh, I talked a little bit about this. Uh, um, Exactuals has been doing payments since 2011, started in film and TV. And the main thing to know is once we started going into music, what we discovered was that, hey, this data is quite a bit different <laughs> than it is in film and TV. It lives in a lot of different places. It's, uh, you know, it, everybody has a different record. 
Uh, so how are we going to account for that, right? And that's where Ray came in. Uh, and, um, uh, and then I think everyone knows, but I'll just say it, we're uh, super honored and proud to be a City National Bank RBC company, uh, and um, uh, which has really just opened up the door for a lot of in incredible uh, uh, things that are not only we're doing now, but that are coming. And, and I'm excited for everyone to, to see those uh, in the future. And then I mentioned SR1, uh, which is uh, Backlash uh, Solutions is the name of the company. Uh, SR1 there. Um, but but yeah, so as I was just saying, uh, in order to pay folks, you need to know who to pay. That's Ray's job. Uh, and um, uh, we use this internally, but then we also make it available in the form of uh, a, an API. And so what what is Ray? Uh, well, if, if you're going in the music industry, I mentioned everyone has a different uh, uh, representation of that data. And um, what we found is that our customers, uh, uh, you know, they're evaluating catalogs, they're acquiring catalogs, they're distributing catalogs, and they're auditing catalogs, right? Uh, and so in order to do those things, uh, you need to know, okay, what is everything that is out there? So as I'll show here in a minute, we source data from as many different places uh, as we can get that data. Um, and uh, we're constantly adding new sources. And then we use Ray to match and resolve that data and then surface that uh, via our API. Um, and so uh, e pluribus unum, why do I call this presentation uh, e pluribus unum? Because it's out of many one. And I, I felt like that was the best way to explain uh, it, uh, you know, the diverse data sets that we're dealing with and then how to resolve that into a single useful uh, record uh, that can be used for the purposes of attribution and payment. Uh, so, so real quickly, I'm gonna go through the uh, opportunities and challenges that we see uh, in, in the music industry. Um, uh, I'm sure everyone is familiar uh, with them, but uh, it's uh, hopefully this will kind of uh, uh, trigger some um, uh, some new ways you can use this data and and uh, uh, and contribute to it as well. So um, most importantly, the end user, right? Uh, this data is being used to power experience, uh, the way that folks listen to music, curation and playlists, um, uh, the recommendation uh, of music that I might be interested in based upon my listening experience. All of that is powered by data. And then of course, new experiences uh, this is my best uh, attempt to represent uh, time the lyrics. Uh, there's a lot of metadata involved with getting those lyrics to sync up with where it is uh, um, on your phone, uh, you know, as you're watching and listening to it. And I wanted to include this because my daughters who are 11 and 14, like they don't just listen to music. They always have the lyrics up. And I thought that was really cool. Uh, and then of course, um, uh, metadata is powering voice experience. And I have to be careful not to say her name, uh, this uh, blue circle here by Amazon, because she will start asking me and uh, what it is I'm, I'm wanting. Um, but uh, of course, being able to say, hey, who wrote Shake It Off? And getting Max Martin, right, as, as part of the answer and not just Taylor. Uh, so, so all of that is part of the experience of the metadata, which rolls right into attribution. So not just the artist, but also, of course, the songwriter, the composer, any derivatives of, of the work as well uh, within that. And, um, you know, being able to uh, make sure that, uh, that you're accounting for not just who wrote it, but also knowing their IPI right, the interested party identifier and the matching the ISWC uh, to the ISRC, so the work to the recording, and, and, and we'll get into that. Um, and then, of course, all of this is for the purposes of payment, and, um, and we want to see this going up and to the right, and of course, you know, uh, it, it has, as consumption has just uh, uh, exploded here uh, with streaming. Um, but these are the opportunities. But there are quite a few challenges associated with this, right? You've got quality of the data, the quantity of the data, the disparate nature of the data, and the dynamic nature of the data. And the way that I always remember this is I was raised by my grandmother and she always told me to mind my P's and Q's. Well, this is your D's and Q's, right? Um, 
so, <laughs> so uh, quality, quantity, disparate, dynamic. And so what do I mean by quality of the data? Uh, these, uh, you know, zombies here entering in, uh, you know, this was my first job in the music industry, right? I'm, I'm hired to come in and manually create data. Or if you get an intern, what's the first thing they're doing? It's like, you're going to be entering metadata uh, or going from website to website and gathering that data and trying to get that into uh, a, you know, the way that you interact with your data. But of course, you know, with armies of folks, literal armies, uh, one of our customers had 40 people manually doing this. With armies of folks doing this, uh, you know, it's very easy for us as humans to fat finger something or to, you know, uh, to do something based upon our own opinion, right? Uh, and then that's inconsistent to my neighbor sitting next to me, right? Uh, so um, the quality of the data. And then the quantity of the data. Uh, I still, still, still love this quote from Willard uh, from 2016 because it's, it's, it's even more profound to think about that this was, you know, five years ago when Willard said a hit song can generate up to 900,000 distinct royalty payments. And just one of those is Spotify in the U.S. And that just blows my mind. This quote here says, for billions of individual streams, we're now in the trillions of individual streams. And of course, 60,000 songs, we hear that quote all the time, right? 60,000 songs being added to uh, Spotify and Apple and uh, uh, Amazon every day, right? Um, I was just talking to a customer of ours. They're producing, this one company is creating a thousand tracks a day. And that's just insane, right? You know, so um, really, really cool stuff uh, in the quantity of the data. And then as we were just talking through, it's disparate in nature. Everyone has a different representation of this data and also how they're keeping the data, whether that's in a database, right? Or whether it's, uh, uh, they may or may not use DDEX, which is an industry standard, or if you're on the publishing side, uh, CWR, right? Um, and, uh, or, you know, a lot of folks just, uh, just use uh, spreadsheets. Um, uh, the, uh, customer that um, I was just talking to that's producing a thousand tracks a day, they've actually been keeping everything in Google Docs before, Ray, which is insane, right? You know, um, and uh, so it's disparate in, in nature. Uh, and then of course, dynamic. And, and that's been a big theme of not just this summit, but just 2020 and 2021 in general, the changing hands of the catalog, right? Um, whether that's, you know, hypnosis by a new catalog or, you know, round hill or, or uh, even um, uh, royalty exchange, right? The dynamic nature of the data itself. Um, and so this is my summary of uh, the opportunities and challenges within the industry. Okay, so how does Ray address this? Um, well, uh, I, I think everyone knows, but just in case not, I, I'm based here in Nashville. Uh, most of Exactuals is in LA. We also have a New York office, but I'm here in Nashville. And of course here in Nashville, we say, it, you know, it all begins with a song, right? We have tons of songwriters here in Nashville. Um, and of course, that song is divided into two. There's a writer and there's a publisher uh, associated with that. And, you know, if you're, um, uh, if it's a hip hop song, there could be many, many, many writers, many, many contributors. Uh, and even here in Nashville, the average song has four writers you know, uh, with that. And, and then of course, uh, beyond the publishing, you have the recording. Now, three years ago, when we started Ray, um, this would have been where we stopped. This was what we set out to do. What we were focused on was finding a way to easily and quickly match recording and publishing information. Uh, and, um, uh, that has been awesome, uh, because, you know, it really helps uh, set everything up for the great work that the MLC is doing now, right? And and in terms of just knowing the ISRC matched to the ISWC. Uh, but since then, we started adding other data, like contextual data. And this is, you know, like, uh, okay, who are all of the um, uh, uh, contributors to this? This would be like, you know, who's the guitar player? You know, who, of course, is the writer? Yes, but that's part of the publishing. But who's the engineer? Who's the producer? And this is really important uh, with new um, royalty types, uh, like neighboring rights, for example, right? Yes, it also powers experience, but 
you know, like what about neighboring rights? So that would be contextual. Uh, intrinsic data, like beats per minute, um, uh, and the key of E flat major, right? You know, that uh, type of data intrinsic to the music itself. And then subjective data, like mood, emotion, uh, um, rhythmic presence, uh, it would be subjective, um, rhythmic energy, uh, and this is where you really get to start into those new marketing experiences like voice, uh, right, and, and then of course usage, uh, consumption, um, and then tying all of that into uh, a form of a fingerprint, and we're actually capturing everyone's different hashes and including this as part of the data flower is, is what I call this here. Um, so with this, with data in general, uh, there's really two sides of the same coin. We talked about the source of data, but it's not enough just to source it. You have to resolve it, you know, and what I mean by resolving it is, you know, one data set might have Paul McCartney, another Paul James McCartney, another Paul J. McCartney, another McCartney comma Paul, another just Lennon McCartney, another no writer at all, right? You know, so understanding that, hey, you know, all of, all of this music is the same, the representation is the same, and it all ties to this ISWC and this IPI and this is who you pay. So that's been our focus since I showed you those two, the publishing and the recording. What we've been focused on is, yes, getting those other data sources, but getting really, really, really good at data resolution. Um, so where do we get our data? Uh, we, we have amazing partners uh, that we work with, uh, large companies like DSPs, PROs. Uh, we pay for data. And then, of course, our customers. Uh, we find that almost all of them are really excited to contribute uh, to uh, sol helping us solve this problem. Uh, and uh, so that, uh, they, um, th this Venn diagram describes where we get our data. And then once we get the data, the very first thing that happens is we put the subject matters experts' eyes on it, right? Uh, that's our musicology team. So they will spend a ton of time with the data, getting to know it at both the source and the data point level. Uh, and they're going to go in, they're going to provide an initial score for each data point. Uh, this particular source is 80% for artist name. Um, but you can see for the C line, it's, uh, it's kind of kind of hit or miss, right? So it's, it's lower, 34% confidence with C line. And we just go through the 279 different data points and provide an initial score. And then what Ray will do is, it, and this is just a few of the data, data uh, sources here, but what Ray will do is it looks at everything associated with a family ID. All that means is that, hey, we believe these are the same, right? And it will go through each source and then pull, when you do a query to Ray, it will pull the version, again, at the data point level with the highest confidence. So that BKGD, that's our internally curated data set by our musicologist, our best known good data, we call it, or background. And so it's going to say, hey, you know, have I created this data already? If so, let me pull that. If not, what's next? And it looks like the label coming directly from the label is next, right? Um, and so forth and so on as it goes through that. And then as our customers uh, use the data, they inform us as to what is right and what is iffy. Uh, and that adds to our machine learning and the data is then dynamic and able to be updated. And then that's uh, distributed to everyone within our pipeline. So a clear example of this is here's uh, some a before and after of data that our customers have given us. You could see, okay, uh, they knew this was a cover. Uh, they attributed it to David Bowie of uh, Suffragette City, right? Uh, artist, a bit of a nod to Earth, Wind and Fire, right? James Wind and Fire. Um, and uh, they, so they, they knew a few data points, but when they hit Ray, it enhances to include all of this other data. And again, there's a ton more data, but this was the data that they were interested in. So now you have the writers, the publishers, you know, their affiliates, the IPIs, uh, and et cetera, et cetera, uh, within that. Um, so uh, I'll pause for a moment and see if there are any questions. And if they're not, we'll, uh, we'll jump into actually querying the API and looking through some examples and whatnot. So let me stop sharing my screen for a moment. 
I think. I don't see anything right now, but actually I was going to ask you, Chris, about the MLC and some of these partnerships, which looks like um, you were maybe about to talk to, or I just saw something on your screen about that and just kind of how this fits, how you guys also fit into the ecosystem. Absolutely. Yeah. So we are um, here. I'll, I'll, uh, I'll pull it back up and, and talk through it that way. Um, but yes, uh, we are a honored, absolutely uh, honored to be a, uh, uh, a preferred uh, data partner uh, with uh, the MLC. Um, uh, there are, um, are five of us and there are more coming. Um, so if you, if you uh, don't work with us, like that's okay. You might work with some of these others, like, uh, you know, like, Music Data Services, Abby Norse Company, uh, phenomenal. Uh, Blocker is another one. Um, uh, Tune Registry, uh, Vistex, uh, of course. Um, and um, uh, there's one more and it slipped in my mind. I apologize. I did, I had my COVID shot this morning and I have been foggy <laughs> ever since. Wow. Um, uh, but, uh, but yeah, I was actually kind of worried. I was like, dude, I hope I'm not like, like dragging. Yeah, that could be rough. You <laughs> definitely take it easy overnight and uh, into tomorrow. Totally. Uh, but, but yeah, so, so um, uh, we've partnered with the MLC. That's been amazing. Uh, and um, I'll actually be uh, presenting uh, this uh, service um, uh, to all of the MLC uh, members uh, next Tuesday. Uh, we'll be going through this. But all, what this is, is Basically, you can quite literally just drag and drop a CWR file uh, and it will match all of the data uh, to what the MLC has on file. So you can know, OK, out of my 10,000 songs, I only need to pay attention to these five. Right. You know, because because we are aligned on the other um, uh, one of our one of the users described is like, thank you so much. You helped me find the needle in the haystack. Right. Um, you know, with that. But uh, it's just a quick, easy way to um uh to compare your data with what the mlc uh has in their database um uh, uh with that but what um we'll be talking through is ray um so uh we do have a lookup tool here uh which is is pretty cool it it's quite literally just meant to be a demo uh, <laughs> uh, uh to show developers um uh like here's an idea of some of the things you can build up on our uh our api um and uh it's been so popular that we're now making it into its own full-fledged product uh however i don't um recommend using this as the product today if you want us to match and um uh you know enhance your data uh, if and you have developers, use the API. If you don't have developers, just email music at exaxels.com, send us what you want, and we'll populate whatever template you need, whether that's you know DDEX. Uh, if you're going to a distributor, we can you know populate that. We have a, a Ray standard output that I can show as well. Um, there's uh, several templates we can populate, or if you have a custom template. But to give you an idea of what this is, basically you just throw whatever data you want in here and it's going to say, okay, here's, here's what we have. Right. And you can see, um, several albums, different UPCs of the, the same, uh, um, uh, that this track appears on. This is just randomly pulling stuff from the database. You see a ISWC in here and kid a, of course, and it's going to pull, uh, kid a is the album, right. But it's pulling everything in its right place, which is the song. Uh, and then all of the different recordings, that this appears on uh, within that. Uh, so uh, if we go to resolution.royalties.ai, there's a quick start guide that walks you through the API. Uh, and uh, I'm gonna, I, I know that, um, I don't think we have any developers here on the call, so I won't spend a, a ton of time here, but it gives you an idea of the power uh, behind it, right? So. Um, the way that our API works is it makes queries across five nodes. And those nodes are collections, contributors, companies, recordings, and works. A collection is like an album or playlist, a contributor, you know, that's that guitarist, writer, performer, engineer, producer, right? Companies, labels, publishers, PROs, distributors, etc. Recordings. Uh, I think we all know recordings and works. We all know works, right? Uh, so it's going to query across those five nodes. And then 
uh, your developers can use this documentation, which is found at the bottom, uh, to basically grab canned queries here. Uh, and so what you would do is be like, hey, I want to know, um, uh, get a specific recording. So here I would just literally copy this URL and, and the node, and I know that I'm going to get all of this data back in return. And to show what that looks like, I'm going to use um, a great piece of software uh, or a product called Insomnia. And it just makes it so that you can visualize what an API call looks like. And again, I apologize that it feels like you're looking at, you know, terminal here uh, and all of the code, but I'll walk you through it. So um, I'm going to remove all of this for the moment. And here is your base URL, resolution.royalties.ai, and then slash recordings. That's that node, right? If I wanted to do the works node, I would do slash works. It's that simple. Um, but if I do slash recordings and I hit go, let me take all of this out just because I, I want to throw an error and show you here. So you're going to get an error and it's going to say, it's going to help you out. It's going to be like, I need a title, I need an ISRC, an artist display name, release date, uh, start or release date in. I need something to go off of. So what we can do is say title and equals, um, uh, give me a, give me a title, Matthew, what have you been listening to? Now you got me hooked on Radiohead, which was like my, uh, yeah. So, uh, I don't know. Yeah. Any of the Radiohead. We'll just say creep. Right? There you go. Uh, I will go old school here. And, uh, if we do this, it's going to pull all the creeps, right? You know, that are in the database. Like TLC. Uh, yeah, there's over 6,000, right? You know, 6,072 creeps here. Uh, but we want to get specific. And so we're going to say, and artist display name. And by the way, I'm just getting this from the documentation. See artist display name here. Uh, artist display name equals, of course, radio head. And here we have that specific, as of course, uh, distributed by Warner UK, right? Have Radiohead um, and the original release date of September 21st, 1992. Uh, and we have all of the albums that it appears on, the C line, the P line. And then we can take this recording ID and drill into any of those other nodes. And so when a customer reaches out to us, we either give them access to the API and say, go to town, or our customer success team works with them to say, all right, tell me what you're, uh, what you're looking for. What do you need? Oh, you're doing evaluation. You're evaluating a catalog. Cool. What information do you have? Well, all they gave me was the song title and the artist. No problem. Give us song title and artist, and we'll pull back everything for that. What all do you need? Well, I need all the recording information, all the recordings that are out there. Do you need covers? Yeah, covers would be great. Cool. Uh, do you need um, uh, the publishing information? Yes, right, cool. So we include that uh, all within that and just uh, populate that in whatever template is, is simplest for uh, the end user uh, within that. Um, so uh, was that what, what you were looking for, Matthew? That's, that's huge. And I was trying to think, I was basically, can you think of any other examples? So say, you know, you're a business manager, any other examples of like, um, that basically being able to tap into this data like this would be perfect for that you can think of, you just mentioned, um, you know, you just for mentioned sure. a great one. Yeah. Yeah. So that was valuation. Right. And so once I evaluate a catalog, uh, and several of our customers use it for this purpose, which is okay. Uh, this is what the, you know, the target gave me. I'm now going to pull back information associated with that and do it without fail. What is always found is a ton of recordings that even the seller didn't know about, mm -hmm. right? So that increases that valuation as well as, you know, it gives a bit of advantage, you know? So I also encourage sellers to use this, you yeah. know, to be like, Hey, know what your catalog's worth yep. before you sell it, right? So, so that's kind of the flip side of that coin. And then once the uh, uh, valuation is done, they make a decision to acquire it. 
Now we've got to get it into the acquirer system, right? You know, and that they might be using a, a, a asset management tool like a Open Play or a Sync Tank, um, mm -hmm. a Song Space. You know, I'm just going through some of the ones that we've seen, and we can populate that because uh, we usually have partnerships with them, or we have their ingest template, or they accept DDEX. Um, you know, and we'll populate that so that the acquirer can now interact with the data. So that would be the second use case. The third, just continuing with that, mm -hmm. is uh, in order to get paid, you're going to want to let everybody know, hey, the, the, the check, the money, you need to tell Exactuals to pay here now, right? Here's all of my information. And so that's where it ties in to Payna Hub. But also, in order to do that, you're going to need to redistribute that catalog. Right. And in order to redistribute it, it's like, uh oh, I now have to meet the Apple standard, the Spotify standard. And if I don't. Right. They're not going to accept it. Mm -hmm. And if they don't accept it, that's going to mean downtime to either when money that should be going to me is still going to the old rights holder, or the own old owner. Right. Uh, or at least my portion of it. Mm -hmm. um, uh, or they took it down and I'm still trying to get it up and the end user can't listen to it anymore. Right. Cause it's not available. We mm -hmm. took it down from the marketplace. And so you got to hit the standard in order to get it into the marketplace without downtime. And, and some folks uh, that use Ray will just go straight to this. They're like, Hey, I've been struggling with the Apple standard. Can you just make sure it meets that standard? Mm -hmm. And Ray is designed to do that because we train it against a particular standard, right? Uh, and, and we see this a lot with classical music because <laughs> it's so complex, right? Uh, to where they'll just pass off uh, the metadata cleanup to us. Uh, and, then, um, and then of course, you know, once you get it into the marketplace, tying into you know, a lot of the themes we saw earlier is with auditing. Hey, am I being paid everything I should? Does SoundExchange know? that you know about these covers, maybe I need to let them know because uh, Ray told me they're out there, right? Mm -hmm. You know, um, And so uh, for auditing purposes, knowing that you're getting paid for everything. Um, so th those are our, our five common use cases. Cool, that's huge, that's super helpful. And then, you know, I expect most of the business managers on here, I'd say a large portion are probably using Data Faction mm -hmm. and Agile Link. Um, Anything else, just like big picture uh, from you guys, stuff that's coming out, just like, you know, looking forward, anything else that you want to point out? Yeah, um, thank you for bringing up Data Faction and Agile Link. We're actually, I think most folks probably have already seen a lot of this, but we're getting a deeper and deeper integration. Um, you know, we uh, in the tech industry talk a lot about interoperability. Mm -hmm. Well, especially with mergers and acquisitions, like Exactuals becoming a part of uh, CNB. Uh, which is a part of RBC, of course. And then as we acquire other companies, um, uh, there's an opportunity for interoperability internal, mm -hmm. right? And so that's a big, big, big part of our focus. Uh, VG and the group there at CNB are, are doing a phenomenal job of just getting us all work, working together and swimming in the same direction and, you know, being less disparate, you know, mm -hmm. um, and, and, and not just within music, but across music, right? Uh, um, we're integrating with film track, for example, right? Um, so, uh, um, which is also owned by CNB. Uh, so just deeper integration across the board is probably the most exciting thing mm -hmm. uh, for me personally, but I'm kind of biased because it's, you know, I'm a product owner. <laughs> yeah. Uh, but making sure that it's a one seamless experience uh, across, uh, you know, uh, Ray, SR1 and Payment Hub. Mm -hmm. And it's like, if you go into Payment Hub, just like, you know, just activate that module, right? You know, mm -hmm. instead of it being disparate systems. That's the main thing we're focused on. Yeah, excellent. Well, uh, thank you. Thank you very much. I think it was awesome, too, just the way you broke down your presentation. The first part was super informative. Your graphics and everything are great. Uh, so thanks for taking the time. Um, and uh, yeah, really appreciate it. Thank you, Chris. Yeah, dude, likewise. And thank you all. And uh, I hope you have a, a, a great day. And and if you haven't, get your shot. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> nice. All right. Uh, thank you, Chris. Uh, take care. Have a good one. All right. You too, man. All right. See ya. Cool. And then uh, that brings us to basically the end. I have like two minutes of wrap up here. Um, 
just um, some pointers or if anyone has any questions. So we'll just get the slides spun up here in a second. Um, I do want to thank, so we just dropped a link in to Miller Kaplan again. Thank you for all of the support and putting this together. And we also just dropped a link into to the royalties report, which touches on a lot of the different areas um, that we were talking about today. There are great interviews in there with some folks that um, didn't present today, but just great resources again. So definitely check out that royalties report. We'll include all of these links when we do a recap uh, in the next week or two. So um, yeah, thank you, because Miller Kaplan really drove a lot of that. So um, again, thank you to them. Um, I think the next slide is probably the, all right, perfect. So Momentus, um, big thank you to them for sponsoring the CPEs. Uh, if anyone has questions about the CPEs, again, there were three CPE opportunities today for the three hour long panels. Um, reach out to us, uh, we'll get anything sorted out. We'll send out those certificates to any of the CPAs that needed those. And then also to our media partners, thank you, Music Business Association and um, Music Managers Forum. Um, they really helped get the word out. I do wanna mention, we're gonna be hosting a tech summit not too long from now, so June 16th. This is all geared towards business managers, entertainment clients, accounting, you know, accounting, accounting for high net worth, entertainment folks, family offices. So we'll be touching on different things from, um, you know, GL and bill pay to uh, project management, you know, internal team management, cybersecurity is gonna be a big part of it. Uh, we will be launching that shortly. So we'll make sure that everyone here uh, gets an invite to that. That'll be another day of uh, virtual programming. So we'll try to take these in person when we can. Um, and then next slide we have, if you wanna reach out to us, look, we're all ears for feedback, for potential topics. We're putting out a lot of content, so we always appreciate people reaching out and just connecting and letting us know what you thought about all of the speakers today. And that's it. So thank you everyone uh, for joining. For I know we try to build in some breaks so we're not all sitting in chairs for six hours, um, but we re really appreciate our, all of our speakers, all of the attendees for joining. Uh, thank you and uh, yeah, that's it. Thanks everyone, take care.